Good day everyone. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, Zugzilla, my Gen 3 JB74 Jimny. It's a 2010 model. Um, I kitted this specifically for uh, competitions and heavy off-road use um, and a bit of overlanding as well. Um, we're going to go through all the accessories uh, that I fitted to that Jimny. Hopefully um, the insights I have on those different accessories um, will give you an easier choice when it comes to adding accessories to your car and um, hopefully it will save you some money. I, I learned the, the expensive lessons on this one so hopefully I can save you some money on this. Okay so let's quickly have a look at the accessory list um, of Zugzilla. Uh, first off we've got the 235 Bridgestone Dueler Matterrain tires, 40mm uh, TJM suspension, 40mm TJM spacer kit, um, custom rock sliders, radial cup protectors, transfer case skid plates, diff protectors, uh, front runner roof rack, DCAT exhaust system, uh, custom front bumper, uh, light force spotlights, Takla seat covers, custom packing system, quick pitch tent uh, bracket, front and rear air lockers, uh, plus plastic to paint. So during this series, you'll see. The car changes a, a few shades of colors. Um, that was the, the plastic dip that I put on to protect my paint uh, while we, we're driving through bush and that type of, that type of terrain. Uh, custom recovery points, uh, caster correction bushes, adjustable pan arts, uh, transfer case and diff breathers, extended brake lines and a TJM snorkel. So um, during this series uh, on Zugzilla, um, we're going to focus on uh, different uh, accessories. That, um, I'll also give you uh, uh, alternative uh, solutions you can look at, alternative brands you can look at, and again, my opinion, nobody else's. I'm not endorsing anybody's uh, accessories. Um, if I am happy with the accessory, I'm going to tell you I'm very happy with this accessory and let's take this further. At the end of this series I will also look at the pros and cons of the Gen 3 Jimny and we'll run through a list of the different accessories that I have on my uh, JB74 Gen 4 Jimny and we can do a comparison between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4. Um, I, I think that's more for the guys still trying to make a choice on uh, which Jimny they, they, they want to go for. Okay, so for port one of the Zugzilla Gen 3 Jimny accessories and overview, we're going to be looking at the tires and suspension. I think um, if, you, if you look at all the social media currently going around, the forums on Jimny's, everybody, the first question most of the people keep on asking um, is what type of tire should I fit to my car? Um, what type of suspension should I fit to my car? So I think this is fitting to do, to do this section as our, our first part in the series. Okay guys, let's talk tires. Um, first for me, you have to decide what you're planning to do with your Jimny. Are you going to use it as a daily runner to go to work and over the weekends you go to do a few trials? Um, are you going to, are you planning to do a big overlanding trip? Are you looking to do more extreme 4x4 obstacles? Um, driving through mud, rock terrain, sandy terrain. Um, we're going to take a look at these three options and then I'll, I'll give my recommendation on them. The standard tires the Jimny's come out with, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in South Africa we get them with the all-terrain a tire, either a Dunlop or a Bridgestone. Um, these are not bad tires uh, for normal day-to-day -day use on the road, getting you back from, from work to home, and then the occasional uh, 4x4 trail that you're doing over the weekend. Not bad at all, even for, for overlanding. Um, I must say for overlanding I prefer a, a tire like the, the BF Goodrich All-Terrain. That's a really good tire uh, for overlanding. Uh, it's a much tougher tire. It's got three ply sidewalls. 
so that protects you on those those type of gravel roads that, that you're going to come across um, that's really badly rutted and you may have some debris that slices your 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 side walls on them um, going for for mud terrain tires you have to look at the terrain you're going to be traveling on um, there's a vast range of mud terrain tires there are mud specific tires um, like your Maxxis Trepadors that's that's heavy off-road stuff if you if you go and look at those tires it's it's got a nice tread pattern on them and it ejects the mud as soon as you you have a bit of momentum on the tire um, for rock driving conditions I would I would look at a normal mud terrain tire like the Bridgestone Dealer or maybe the the B of Goodrich uh, mud terrains as well it's a very hard tire you're not going to get the kilometers on mud terrains that you get on an all terrain or a normal highway terrain tire um, the mud terrains do tend to 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 go down a bit faster uh, on their tread than the highway terrains and all terrains so with mud terrains you also stand the chance of damaging them um, cutting side walls uh, losing the little knobs on the tread pattern um, I had that with a, with a Cooper tire where the Cooper tire actually started crumbling and I, I started losing the knobbies of, of the, the tread of my tire. Um, the Bridgestone dealers I had on Zugzilla, I was quite happy with them. Um, they were not bad on road. Um, little bit of road noise uh, while you're traveling on normal tar roads. Um, but on the, the gravel roads, and off-road off obstacles, they, they were amazing. Um, the second pair of tires I had on Zuxilla was uh, the Nankang uh, Mud Stars. This was an excellent off-road tire. On-road, it was not as good. But the performance you got off-road on those tires made a major difference. Uh, this was a tire, I think, that was designed more for permanent off-road use than a mixed use. Um, tire sizes very important. Um, I bought Zugzilla as a demo model and it already had the Bridgestone 235s fitted as tires. It had a TJM snorkel, it had a TJM 40mm uh, suspension and it had the uh, front runner roof rack. So buying a demo Jimny, you get those extras, have a look out. The new Jimnys are probably going to start coming out where the dealership starts kitting them with a few accessories and you can always pick those up at a great bargain so if you're looking around for a new Jimny or a Gen 3 Jimny look at the kit that's available you always score on those extras okay so now we're gonna have to have a look at tire sizes this is very important um, the Jimny comes out with a standard uh, 205 75 R15 um, all-terrain tire um, that's how we get them in South Africa um, I, I know overseas that, that may differ for different tires you get with them um, but that 205 75 um, my biggest complaint about that is um, the amount of lift you get, you get how, how far you get off the ground because at the end of the day your tire size is the only thing that can get your car and that does everything a bit higher off the ground and gives you a bit better clearances. My Jimny, I didn't have a decision on tire size, I wasn't educated enough and those 235s at the end of the day cost me a lot of money and um, the gain I got from them wasn't that much. Um, on the 235s you have to have a uh, even with the 44 or the 40 mil TJM suspension I had um, it was still catching while it was flexing um, I had to cut the factory uh, plastic bumper to fit the tires as well and it was still catching when I flexed after that I actually installed the 40 millimeter spacer lift kit uh, from TJM as well and I was 90% there so what effect does these different tire sizes have on your um, speedometer, road noise, ride comfort? Um, the 215 doesn't have a big 
problem when it comes to your speedometer readings or your odometer readings. It doesn't put that out at all. Um, you can have a rather slow crawling speed while in 4 low on the 215s. Um, the 235s, your speedo is out about 10 kilometers per hour. That puts your odometer out as well. Um, the road noise on my terrains, are, you're going you're gonna to hear them on a tall road. Um, I haven't come across a mud terrain that doesn't make a noise on the tall road. Um, there may be some new trek patterns out there that I don't know about that, that reduces that, but it's, it's always there. Uh, right comfort, you can always push down your pressure on your tires, uh, especially I, I like to do that on gravel roads. Uh, badly rutted gravel roads, I drop my, my tire pressure down to about one bar. And that makes it nice and, nice and comfortable and, and it also improves your ride a bit. Um, the power on your 1300 Jimny. The 235 sucks all the power out of it. It's uh, your crawling speed off-road much slower and doing an overlanding trip with 235s uh, if you have a headwind, you're going to do about 100 kilometers per hour max with those 235s on. It really sucks the power out of your car. For that few millimeters you gain in ground clearance, um, I don't think the 235s are worth it. So if you're looking at overlanding, mixed use, go for the 215. Um, that gives you an extra bit of clearance not too much, you don't feel the power that the, the, the power is much less. With the 235s you can feel it instantly. Um, there's, there's no comparison between the 215 and 235. It's 215 is the way to go for your journey. Um, if you want to go extreme, you can go 235s, you can even go up to a, a 30 inch tire. But then you're going to have to look at something to boost your engine performance. You're going to have to look at uh, maybe gear reductions. Um, the Gen 3 Jimny has a chain in its drawn for case. And if you put too much strain on your drivetrain, that chain will actually, um, it, will, it will snap or it will stretch. And that's all new drawn for case. Um, going extreme, I'd say, maybe gear reduction but my best option for that would be the rock lobster kit uh, the Jimny actually has space for a, a manual shifting transfer case with the short stick you don't use the buttons anymore and that's a transfer case out of the SJ13 uh, Suzuki that they add a few gears out of the SJ10 transfer case to get this gear reduction done that will give you a crawler gear that's slower than a Jeep Rubicon's crawler gear. So if you want to go extreme, look at that Rock Lobster option uh, for your Jimny. It can be fitted to your Gen 3 model without any major issues. But it's going to have a big cost implication. I think as soon as you want to go extreme with a, a Gen 3 Jimny, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So talking about knock-on effects. Uh, we have to look at the suspension. Uh, Zuxilla had the TJM 40mm full suspension. That was the, the coils and the XGS shocks that was fitted. Um, this was not a bad suspension. I, I had it in the Jimny the whole time I owned it. Uh, it was quite soft off-road. It was amazing. It had great flex. Um, but for on-road use it, it, was, it was a bit soft. Um, I would say, end of the day, it was a, it was a good all-round suspension, but there are better suspensions out there, and I'll mention them a bit later. Um, with this 40mm lift, I actually had to add another 40mm uh, spacer kit. That's the spacers that fit the top, uh, on top of the coils. I had to add that because my 235 tires were still catching while I was flexing. And um, that's, that's always bad. That, that can rip your, your uh, different the arches on your car that can rip the arches off it can damage the bumpers it can cut the tires so getting that sorted was was a priority for me 
and as soon as I did the 40 mil spacer kit, uh, the car didn't catch anymore, but now I was at 80 mil lift. And that 80 mil lift had an effect on my um, return to center on steering, my caster on the, the diffs. So the caster on the diffs um, is actually the, the angle that the diffs are running at. Um, to, towards your prop shaft and your transfer case, those type of stuff. And then I also had a problem with my pan art. So to fix those problems, I had to do caster correction bushes. Um, the normal uh, bushes just have a little hole in the center. Uh, the correction bushes actually have a hole that's a bit off center to compensate for the amount of lift that, that you've done to your car. Then uh, secondly, the pan art uh, had to become adjustable. The pan art is responsible for doing, keeping your diffs aligned with the center point of your car. So the, the, if you do a lift that's too high, you can actually get to a point where your diffs are not centered to your car anymore. So that's where the adjustable pan art rods come in, so that you can adjust them back to center on your car. Um, uh, like I said, the TJM suspension, I was, I was happy with that. It was a very comfortable ride because it's so soft off-road, it, it helped a lot. Um, on the overlanding trips, it was good on gravel. Um, you couldn't do very high speed on gravel, but you shouldn't do that in a gymny in any case. I'd say 80 kilometers per hour on, a, on the gravel roads in South Africa is what you, it's a safe speed. Do that in four high and you're going to be good. Because the gymni is so short, um, the back tends to come out a bit where when you're doing high speeds on uneven terrains on gravel. But the TJM suspension helped a lot. Uh, the standard suspension in the gymnies, don't bother. Um, there's a lot of options for different suspension upgrades. You're going to feel that it's worth the money. Spend the money on a decent suspension. It's going to give you back so much more than you spent. So, on the off-road side, we had the uh, Suzuki Flex Day. Uh, it was a Suzuki Club event uh, that we joined. We had a lot of different suspensions there. Uh, we had the TJM, the Tough Dog, the EFS suspension, Armada Extreme, and the, the standard Jimny uh, suspension. And we, we looked at the type of flex that you could get out of these different uh, setups. The TJM came out on top, second was Tough Dog, and I think third was EFS. Um, all good suspensions, all happy with them. I know the Tough Dog is a bit firmer uh, on road. Um, some say too firm, uh, especially for overlanding. I think it's a good suspension because it wants a bit of load to give you a comfortable ride. Especially in the Gen 3. In the Gen 4, it's a totally different story. Um, the Gen 3 has still got an oil-based shock on the, the Tough Dogs. You get a nice full suspension kit um, that coils its shocks. You get extended brake lines. You get an option on a nice return to center um, uh, steering dampener, which is very, very nice. Um, it's actually got a small little coil on top of the shock. And that's, that, that helps your caster correction because your return to center and your steering wheel goes out as soon as you lift your car. And that helps with the caster correction bushes that makes a massive difference. Um, so Tough Dog I'd say is one of the, the top ones for the Gen 3 Jimny um, in my opinion. And a close second is EFS. EFS has, has done a great job um, with their suspension kit as well. I think they just don't have the amount of extras that you get with the Tough Dog system. Um, TJM has recently pulled out of South Africa, so we don't have access to TJM anymore. Um, but you can probably still import them if you really want. As soon as you go over a 40 mil lift, you're going to have a major impact on the drivability of your car. And there are a bit of knock-on effects. So what you're going to need to be looking at is caster correction bushes. Um, you're going to have to do adjustable pan arts. Uh, you're also going to have to look at your drive shaft. You may have to do a drive shaft extension because 
the, the bigger angles your, your car runs at, the further the drive shaft pulls out um, of your gearbox transfer case. So look at those angles, see that there's enough thread on your drive shaft after you did the lift. Another important thing that a lot of people forget, they spend a lot of money on their big suspension and everything and then they don't extend their brake lines. Um, your flex will be affected if you don't extend your brake lines. The wheel actually hangs on that brake line. The standard brake lines on the Jimny is normal rubber pipes. They, it's got a, a thick wall to it, but you know, um, I opted to, to, to fit braided lines. Uh, it's those, it's a normal rubber pipe with a braided uh, metal on the outside. That, that was just for, you know, you never know when a rock uh, eats your brake line and then you sit without brakes. Um, driving 4x4 without brakes is not fun. <laughs> I've, I've done that once. Um, so, look at your brake lines. Uh, if you can, go for those uh, braided, uh, metal braided brake lines. You can go to any um, brake shop and ask them for extended uh, brake lines and the guys will take in your car they'll go through it, they'll give you different options um, they crimp all the different connectors together um, it's it's a nice job it doesn't cost a lot of money but it's really worth it if you do a suspension lift of more than 40 millimeters. another chat we can have is about um, what your 4x4 suspension upgrade actually does for you off-road um, with the fact that the Jimny comes out with no diff locks, it's only got a center diff lock. As soon as you've got a front and a back wheel off the ground, your Jimny is going to stand still and it's not going to go forward anymore. So what this suspension does for you is it provides you with more flex. Um, flex is actually when your wheel articulates into, uh, one side goes into the wheel well and the other one tries and comes as close to the ground as you can. While you have traction on all four wheels, you'll have forward momentum. Um, you at least need to have traction on three wheels to have forward momentum uh, with the Jimny. And this flex helps a lot with traction. Um, if you can keep wheels to the ground, you're in a good place and you have forward momentum. Um, we'll look at different driving styles that helps you. Um, keeping forward momentum while you're off-roading but I, I think this is one of the most important things for a Jimny is to have good flex um, it's got a solid front axle setup and that's all to provide more flex for the car that provides more traction and that's why they don't fit a diff lock um, to the Jimny as standard they are available we're going to be chatting about them in the next episodes but look at the flex i'm going to post a few videos uh, on specific flex you could see our zuxilla flexed in different situations and the extra traction i got um, by just adding that little bit of flex uh, another thing we can have a chat about on the the, the suspension as well is the la sport created uh, a quick disconnect for your sway bar now the sway bar actually prevents your car from rolling too much while you're on road um, and off road it actually limits your flex um, because it trying, it's trying to keep the car rigid so you can do a bit of harder cornering um, while you're normal, in, in normal driving conditions but it does limit you off, uh, off road so if you have one of these fitted um, it's, it's a start to a cheap solution of a, of a locker. Um, my friend Peter actually fitted this uh, sway bar disconnect to his car. And we can have a look at the video now. And you're going to see how much uh, more this car flexes when the sway bar is disconnected. Also on the, the flex club challenge competition we had. We had a Jimny with standard suspension. And when the sway bar was disconnected. Um, it actually flex more than all the, the aftermarket suspensions. So think about it, if you're doing an aftermarket suspension, 
and you still need a bit more flex do the sway bar disconnect route um, I'm, I'm going to try and get the, the contact details for the guys that, that provided that quick disconnect and uh, I'll post that in the comments so guys keep a look out on that and um, it's, a, it's a good bit of kit to have I didn't have it on Zugzilla um, because I had front and rear lockers fitted so having a sway bar that disconnects was looked like a bit of overkill for me I just want to thank you guys for joining me today for the, the first episode of this series on the Gen 3 or JB43 Jimny. Um, I think this was a good start um, because this is the question that everybody starts asking as soon as they get their Jimny. Hopefully I answered your questions. If you've got more questions, please comment. I'm going to try and um, reply to your comments as soon as possible. Also, check out our social media on Facebook, um, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, the Just Jimny pages are all up there, so go and join them. And of course, for this video, if you want more of this content, more of my insights and uh, the fact that I'm trying to save you money, please subscribe to my channel, um, comment, let's have a chat and Just Jimny on.